Alvin used to fuss at the guys that was coming up with me. And they was in the streets a lot. He was telling them, like, you can't have one feet in and one feet out. You gotta be. What's up, boxing fam? We've got some next level drama in today's video, so you better strap in. Gervonta Tank Davis has finally spoken out on why he parted ways with his longtime trainer, Calvin Ford. That's right, Tank's got his reasons, and if you thought this was just a simple business decision, well, think again. We're breaking down everything, the rise of their bond, the breaking point, and what this means for Tank's career and his future fights. This is about to get real deep, so grab your popcorn and let's get into it. So, let's rewind a bit. Tank Davis and Calvin Ford weren't just trainer and boxer. They were like family. Calvin was there when Tank was coming up, helping him rise through the ranks from a kid with talent to one of boxing's biggest superstars. Think of it as one of those mentor-student relationships, except Ford wasn't just in Tank's corner physically, he was there emotionally too. This guy had Tank's back through thick and thin, guiding him through some tough times and even tougher fights. Who do you want to see you? As a guy that's in his trainer, that's like a father figure to him, you're training him all the time, you know him, both y'all from the streets of Baltimore the whole bit. Who do you want to see Tank fight next? I want him to get all of them that ran their mouth. But what do we see now? Gervonta Davis is out here training with a new face, Derek James. Yeah, you heard that right. The same Derek James who trained Frank Martin, one of Tank's recent rivals, and went up against Tank. So how did it all fall apart with Calvin Ford? And why Derek James? Let's keep breaking this down. But one thing is for sure, Ford is having a nightmare being replaced by James. Waiting to sit down and talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, saying what his mental way. Whatever he want to do, I just prepare him for it. Mentally, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but there's one man behind it all. Yep, it's Floyd Money Mayweather. Now, any boxing fan knows Floyd Mayweather's influence on Tank's career. Floyd was not only promoting him, but also shaped his brand in those early days. Floyd's status and connections were supposed to be everything for Tank. But over time, we saw something start to shift. As Tank grew, the tension between him, Floyd, and Calvan started to surface. Another thing I want to touch on is the Floyd situation. You know, Floyd is Floyd. That's like I say, Tank is Tank, man. But at the end of the day, you know, the man is chasing greatness. And you should be supporting that. And I always tell you that. You should be supporting that, you know. It's a rocky road that we see what's going on. Just pay attention, man. The story is going to be built itself, you know. But again, that's how you burn bridges. Uh, somebody said this is the true colors of a person that's coming out, man. They can't stand it, you know. Calm is it? I mean, I I don't like using that word calm, you know. But our Lord knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. All right. This is where the plot thickens. Just as Tank was gearing up for his latest fight, word got out that Floyd was training his next opponent, Lamont Roach. That's right, Floyd was out here, backing the guy Tank was about to step into the ring with. Imagine how that must have felt for Tank. You've got Floyd, your former promoter, and a guy who was supposed to be in your corner, now literally backing your opponent. This whole situation with Roach, it wasn't just another fight for Tank. It became a matter of respect. With Floyd throwing shade and Calvin staying quiet, it probably felt to Tank like he was fighting this battle on his own. So, with all this drama bubbling up, Tank decided to make a move. And that's where Derek James comes in. Y'all gotta watch mm -hmm. these guys, right, man. He's a good he's, fighter, yeah. He was a Golden Gloves champ from Indianapolis, right? That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. National Golden Gloves champ, yeah. Yeah, man, and uh... He's got some skills, dog. Like I was like, that's a, that's a good one to right. add to the squad. Right. Right. Add how, one. Old, um, how old is he? I think he's like 26. Okay. So he's still so young. Yeah, young. Yeah. Still, still, and listen, this thing about it, he's still getting better. He's still, because this is our third fight together. So okay. you got to understand that like, once he gets everything I'm telling him, the growth process, mm -hmm. he's going to be amazing. Yeah. Listen, yeah. He may be fighting for a world championship pretty soon, so. I was going to say, I, I, wow. I wouldn't mind watching him and Javante Davis. Yeah, the same way, yeah. 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 Like, they sparred before the same way, yeah, same way. Oh, they have sparred before? They sparred before, yeah. Cause, How'd that go? <laughs> uh, I don't know how I went. Yeah. I, I wasn't there before. What you think about Javante Davis? I like him. I yeah. like him as an individual, man. I like him. I individual, man. I like him uh, I mean, I know him, you know, and I like him. I think yeah. it'll be a good fight. I think that, um. Frank matches up pretty well. Yeah. But most of the guys that 
Javante, I think, will be probably the toughest one. James switching sides to train Tank now. It's almost like the ultimate I'm my own boss statement. Tank probably saw James as someone who understands his fighting style and isn't caught up in all that Mayweather Calvin drama. But more than that, it's like Tank wanted a fresh start. Someone who wasn't tangled up in history. Someone who could bring a new perspective. Now we can't talk about this without bringing Leonard Ellerbe into the mix. Leonard's been in Tank's corner for a minute, handling the business side, managing negotiations, and hyping up Tank's fights. He was also close to Floyd, so he understood all the background drama. Leonard was the glue keeping everyone on the same page, at least for a while. Uh, Alomachenko next. Do you see that kind of a fight happening for Tank? All these guys, all these guys, who you guys, who you guys say are the top guys out there, Tank gonna get every one of these guys. He just can't fight them all in one night. But as things with Floyd and Calvin got rocky, Leonard's position shifted too. Some say Leonard tried to keep things smooth between Tank and Floyd, but when that didn't work, it seemed like he took a step back. He couldn't keep the peace forever. When Tank realized that even Ellerby wasn't helping him maintain control, that might have been the last straw. Yeah. I was, and I was just about to ask, like you said, uh, contracts don't define relationships. How's the relationship with, with you and Tank, with Floyd and, with Tank. Floyd and Tank, and the list goes on. Great. Yeah. Now Tank has released a statement following his bold move of replacing coaches months out from his fight with Roach. Now you can't miss out on Davis said, so let's get to it. In a recent interview, Gervonta Davis broke his silence on a series of explosive events surrounding his split from longtime coach Calvin Ford and his new partnership with trainer Derek James. Tank made it clear that his decision wasn't just about changing coaches. It was a pivotal moment in his boxing career and personal growth. He acknowledged the invaluable lessons he learned from Ford, who played a crucial role in his rise to fame. However, Davis also emphasized that he needed a fresh perspective and a new approach to take his game to the next level. Calvin helped me build my foundation but I realized I needed someone who could push me harder and challenge me in ways I hadn't experienced before. But then, out of nowhere, he spots Tank Davis. And before anyone could say, fight, Tank unleashed his infamous left hook, the same one that ended Frank Martin's career. Yep, you heard that right. Floyd took a hit that left him shaken, and the chaos that followed was something straight out of a movie. Looks like this Dubai vacation wasn't the peaceful getaway Floyd had in mind. The Money Man, I'm right here in Dubai. Go tennis star, luxury rentals. Check them out. When you come to Dubai, top flight, follow me. We got everything. McLaren in different colors. Ferraris, Lambos, whatever you want. Rolls Royce, Bugatti, whatever you want. When you come to Dubai, it's the place to be. Check it out. Crazy colors. Come on, man. Live flashy like Floyd Mayweather. Rotana Star. Whatever you want, they got Rotana Star. This wasn't just a casual punch, it was a statement. Davis had been simmering with tension regarding his former mentor, and this confrontation was the boiling point. Floyd has always been known for his defensive prowess, but he clearly didn't see this coming. If it weren't for his security detail, things could have escalated even more. Now, let's dive a little deeper into the history between these two. Tank and Floyd have been intertwined in the boxing world for years, with Floyd acting as a mentor to Tank. However, the relationship has soured, especially after Floyd started coaching Tank's opponents, including Frank Martin. Imagine your mentor giving away your secrets to someone you're about to fight. That's a betrayal many wouldn't take lightly. You know he the one, you know he the one told Frank that I was running at 5 o'clock, I mean 7 o'clock in the morning, Friday. He told Frank that. He was giving Frank tips and stuff like that. I seen his people's uh, 
drop by while I was uh, running. It's cool. It's, it's all right. Man. I don't really think too much of it. it ain't, you're not gonna hurt me. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's good to be with him than be cool with him because he can do some crazy stuff. He'll pitch him in a bad situation. Adding fuel to the fire, Floyd fired his longtime associate, Leonard Ellerby, after Ellerby supported Tank during his fight. This move didn't sit well with Davis, and he made his feelings known, especially during a heated exchange with Errol Spence Jr. At that point, it was clear. The rift between Tank and Floyd was growing. What the? Uh. What, 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 what's the name of that? I see you got your people. Y'all all, all stepping, huh? Nigga, where they at? I don't know. They don't like me. Speak up, sir. Frank. What do you mean? Love limit. I don't like floors, motherfucker. No, you don't. EJ, you the trash talk. After the incident, Floyd tried to regain control of the narrative. He painted himself as the victim, insisting he had always been there for Tank and had the boxer's best interests at heart. But many saw through the facade, especially considering the tension that's been building. My thing, my thing is, I've always been there for him from day one. Um, we had a game plan, and my game plan was to help him become world champion and take things to that next level. And I've, I've always been there for him. And just over the years, you can see, I've always been positive, always said great things about him, always pushed him to be great. And, um, but over the years, it's constantly going on the internet, take a shot at Floyd, take a shot at Floyd, take a shot at Floyd. Uh, constantly be disrespectful, constantly be disrespectful. When all I ever been was respectful to try to help this fighter, um, go as far as he could possibly go. That's all I ever did. And let's not forget why Floyd went after Tank in the first place. Davis was reportedly dating Floyd's ex, and that's when things really hit the fan. Rather than settling things like adults, Floyd tried to get Tank locked up. It's a petty move that only added more fuel to the fire. As all of this drama unfolded, Tank hinted at a possible fight between the two. The buzz in the boxing community is that fans are eager to see these two finally settle their differences in the ring. After all the tension, a match would not only be entertaining, but also a chance for both to prove who's really the boss. Now with Ford joining the team, it's going to be hard for Tank to deal with everything at once. Some think Calvin might still be open to mending things down the line. But for now, it's clear he's moving forward with Floyd and whatever other opportunities come his way. My hand, he came in the corner at the sixth round and said, my hand is hurting. And if you look at the tape, I said, man, I don't want to hear that. Fight through it. And he done it. Y'all got to get this young man his props. This split marks a major turning point in Tank's career, and it raises one very important question. Can Derek James really fill Calvin's shoes? Only time will tell, because at the end of the day, Ford was like family to him. Tank was the first one in the gym, the last one out the gym. Tank used to sit on the ring like this and watch me train him. How old is he at this point? He was like seven, eight. Okay. A lot of stuff that I was giving my son my son was giving it to Tank, so it was a perfect fit. The Tank was like the family. I mean, the guy was praising Tank in every interview, so it's strange to see him switch up like that, unless there is something we don't know. I mean, with Floyd, you can never be too sure of anything. Damn. I don't hear Tank as Tank as the day. I hear Tank as that little boy. Mm. He even coach. Mm. And he came in the gym one day, and he said, Coach, I seen it. What you saying? I had all the belts on me. He said, I'm gonna be that dude. The rest is history. 
Damn, I got goosebumps low key. That's good. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.